My name is Tom Haak. I'm the director of the HR Trend Institute. As every year, I've collected a list of nice trends for you. The overriding theme this year is from adaptation to transformation. In the last year, we have seen a lot of adaptation in the HR arena. We have shown that we were able to adapt. But now, 22 is the year of real transformation. The first trend on this year's list I've called embrace complexity. I could have also called it let's get rid of the models. We in HR, we like models. If you go to our website, you can see a collection, for example, of leadership models. We have collected more than 120. All those models look more or less the same. Models are helpful, but they also simplify the reality and sometimes, sometimes too much. Let's embrace complexity, let's embrace diversity, and let's think on our own. Let's not think, oh, we should behave as that model. No, let's think on our own accord. Number two, and I don't want to create a revolution, but it is called HR as activists. HR as activists. What we have seen in organizations over the last years, we have seen many things we don't like. And there is abuse, but there are also other things that, well, we should not accept. For example, salary differences between men and women. The other way around, men and women. Uh, salary differences that are not justified, but also between all other different groups. So there are things we don't like. We as HR should not be bystanders and looking at it, analyzing it, producing reports, saying to our management, yeah, yeah, it's not so good. No, we should take a, sta a standpoint and we should take action. And in that way, we can make workplaces a lot better. Trend three, HR for the ecosystem or a wider scope. You often see that HR and HR teams are working for people on the payroll of the organizations. That is a too limited view. There are many other stakeholders that are important for the organization. Of course, uh, there are candidates, we take those into account. There is the flexible workforce, but there are also the clients of the organization, the end clients. Uh, what do we know about the end clients and what are we doing for the clients? There are suppliers. Um, and if you look wider, if you widen your scope, you could also look at your immediate environment. What are you doing for your villages, for your cities? And what are you doing for the wider society? Organizations are more and more part of a network and part of bigger ecosystems. So we could say, hey HR, make sure you are relevant in and for the ecosystem. Yeah. Number four, the end of the employee. What we have seen during the COVID-19 crisis that Employees have shown that they could very well act on their own in their teams, far away sometimes from the headquarters and the managers controlling them. Employees and teams have experienced independence and they have experienced that they could be self-managing. This is a long-term trend. We talk still about employees as if we own them. How should we motivate our employees? Why do our employees leave? The end of the employee means that people become more independent and more equal to the organization. So an important trend to watch and an important trend to take into account when designing HR interventions. Trend number five. It's very unfortunate that I'm not Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, I saw a keynote of him uh, a, a couple of weeks ago where he talked about the evolution of the metaverse. And what he could do is say, oh, okay, I'll show it to you. 
It's not possible in this short video, unfortunately. But the metaverse is going to be very important in creating real fantastic experiences for people. Sometimes it's called something like the 3D internet. I don't think that justifies it all, but it's connecting real experiences, virtual experiences, and making life for people a lot more yeah, fun and real experience. Big implications for people at work. And so start thinking, how can you use the metaverse to increase the experiences for people connected to your organization. N number six, I called forgiving technologies. HR tech has boosted in the last years and we've seen many applications that are very useful. Still, if you look at the technology, the technology still is not very forgiving. It's forcing people to use a certain workflow. It does not take into account how advanced or how digital savvy the user is. What you see starting is technology that is able to adapt to the people that use the technology. And I like that a lot. So don't force people in workflows, but let's see how the technology can be so flexible that it really becomes a fantastic experience to use the technology. Lots of work to do, but luckily we see an early, early signs of this trend. Number seven, recruiting for diversity. What I hate is the war for talent. And we still hear a lot about the war for talent. Oh, it's back again, the war for talent. We cannot find the people. The great attrition people are leaving. We cannot find the people. If you look at the recruitment efforts of organizations, they generally are still looking very, very narrowly. If you have people with specific skill sets or people in specific categories, for example, uh, uh, older people, those people have fantastic skills you can use if you start using the skills as the building block and say, hey, where can we find these skills? And are we really willing and able to attract people from a wider, uh, diverse pool? So recruiting for diversity, very important, very helpful. And I don't believe there's the war for talent because there is an abundance of talent around us. Let's use it. Number eight, it's time for some real empathy. We all see organizations and hear organizations and yes, the people are very important and we're really listening to our people and we, often it doesn't come across as really serious. It's still organization first, people second. Now it's time for some real empathy. Really dive into and try to understand what drives people and how can we, let's say, make sure that the wishes, needs and capabilities of people are used in our organization. Study design thinking. And if you look at the design thinking process, it always starts with empathize. So 2022, let's show some real empathy as organizations and as HR in organizations. Another trend we see emerging is life coaching. There were times a long time ago that organizations said, well, we, we can't deal with other aspects of our employees. It's about the work and what they do in their private life and with their family and friends, etc. is not of our concern. That's changing. We see organizations taking a broader interest and saying, we want to help people to, yeah, to become better, not only at work, but also in their life. So it's about financials, it's about how to deal with other people, how to grow outside work. So life coaching, of course, has a lot to do with well-being, eh? not only well-being at work, but well-being as a total person. I think a very interesting trend to watch. As HR always loves to talk about HR, 
I've included as the last trend for this year, number 10, and that's about the split of HR. We have seen it happening in the last years and that will evolve further. HR will be split basically in three areas. The biggest chunk is HR operations. Uh, many people who are in HR today are in operations and they will be in operation. Running in a way the HR machine, making sure the employee, exper employee experience is fantastic and uh, fast and it's about uh, a high level of services. Of course, it's also about automation, HR operations. The second area, smaller, is about HR strategy or the HR architects. Have people who are looking at the organization and say, how can we, with our HR interventions, help to realize our strategy and deal with our issues? The third area for the moment is called people success helping people to become better people first as i said in one of the other trends so split in hr operations strategy and people success i have presented 10 trends to you it could have been 12 it could have been 20 but i selected these 10 and i hope they can inspire you to look at your organization to look at your HR practices and see, hey, how can we use these trends? In the end, it's not about the trends, of course. Eh? I, I'm not advocating that you should use everything. No, as always, first look at your big organizational issues and then try to be creative and see, hey, how can we use the trends to tackle the issues and to increase the impact of HR? I wish you all the best and uh, hope to hear from you soon. Take care.